okay guys so the other day what we did uh, we have installed the uh, the basic patch management uh, components which are uh, WSUS and then the software update point right and we have synchronized the software updates from WSUS right uh, as you can see um, let me also show you the log file real quick Let's see So we have this WSync MGR log file, right? If you guys remember the other day what we did, all this is from five sitting up. I think this video done is yeah six three. As you can see, it's a initially we had the sync failed thing, right? After that, okay. As you can see, it shows like it has started synchronizing the updates, and this is the uh, this is the progress. And once it has synchronized all the updates, so first of all it synchronizes. So first of all, WSUS has to synchronize from the um, from the uh, Microsoft Update Server, and then uh, the based on the um, classifications, products, and the language, right? What we have selected, uh, our SCM SCP will start synchronizing with WSUS, right? As you as you can see, it's synchronizing these updates, right? And based on our selection some of them were skipped as you can see it says some of them are skipped and because say for example in this case it says because it was superseded I'm skipping this patch I don't need to again uh, the download an expired update right so because it is superseded I'm skipping that so that way we have finally 657 items right now See, we have discussed on this part, like what is required, what is installed, person compliant, downloaded and deployed. So right now, none of the patches are required, right? They're not installed. Percentage complaints is nothing, right? Because percentage complaints comes from required versus installed. So if 10 patches, uh, 10 machines out of your uh, 10,000 machines, only if 10 machines requires this patch and it is installed on five machines, right? The percentage compliance is calculated as uh, 5 divided by 10, right? So that's how it is not calculated because you have 10,000 machines and if only 5 machines got installed, that's not how the percentage uh, compliance is calculated. It is based on the required. Now, the machines which require this patch. Morning, Manju. Good morning. Back from vacation? Back in Hyderabad now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, let's pick it up from here. So now what I'll do, uh, let me first uh, start the uh, client machine, right? And run the scan cycle so that uh, once the scan cycle runs, right? That's when uh, we are going to have the status here. So right now it says required zero. Let me just scroll by this. Sort by required and see if at least if one machine requires it. See currently requirement is zero. Not even a single machine requires any of these patches. That's because till now we haven't run, uh, we haven't uh, started any client machine, and the scan cycle has not yet, uh, run. Right. So let me start meters zero one. Let me quickly summarize the steps that we are going to do today. Um, now, I'll give you a high level overview and then do it uh, practically. So simple. Now, what what have we done? We have installed WSS, 
we have installed software update point right we have synchronized we have synchronized updates from WSUS to SCP and actually WSS got it from um, Microsoft update server fine and um, when we say synchronize what is that we are synchronizing we are synchronizing not the updates means we are not getting the actual updates onto your machine or you're getting this metadata XML what is there in the metadata XML only info related to updates like what is the title of the update what is the description for which operating system is this update for okay for which architecture it is for what is the language of this update so all that kind of information right uh, related to the updates have been synchronized and only that information you have to cross check that if you go to the place uh, initial place where we have given um, you know where we asked to download the patches see so, yeah, that was under source updates right if you open this updates thing and also wait a minute see the size of it rather than getting into that those are just the metadata file right so see the size of it so the size is just 56.8 kb after downloading as you can see you might think that it has downloaded 657 patches but if you see the size it is just this few kbs because it's only the xml file which is downloaded not the actual patch right now what is that we wanted to do now what we wanted to do is the client machines will run scan cycle right so against what they are going to run this scan cycle now you have 650 updates metadata xml file right you have some approximately 660 patches are there in this metadata xml file now the client machines will when the trans and scan cycle it will download this xml file right downloads xml file and you can say check scan or compare uh, so I'll say scan and compare with the XML right so what it is trying to do is out of the 660 patches how many patches are really required for me because in those 660 patches you have some patches related to for example office 2010 right and our client machine doesn't have office 2010 so it's not required or some patches would be uh, for um, you know they they uh, some patches are required only after certain patches are already installed certain level of patches are already installed because right now we just have a windows 7 machine a, a, a just a windows 7 iso right after that we haven't we never downloaded any patches onto that machine so directly you will not be able to download the patches which are released in the month of april 2017 say suppose they require uh, patches which were in 2015 or 2016 have to be installed first right only then you can install 2017 something like that right or uh, some cumulative patches are required some service pack is required right before they can you can install other patches maybe it requires a service pack so based on that it will first do a requirement check it will say okay out of the patches 60 patches that you're showing me only some 15 or 20 or 100 are required for me right so this the output of this scan cycle is required not required so that is the flag what we are expecting out of this scan cycle right now once you know what are the patches which are required so what are what we what are we going to do we are going to create a software update group so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add or select all required patches and create a SUG software update group right I'll, I'll select all the required patches and create a software update group once a software update group is created I'm going to deploy it to a collection 
right but remember till now we haven't downloaded the patches so while you're deploying it to a collection so what are the steps which will happen within the same uh, de deployment wizard are it will create it will download the patches it will distribute oh, wait a minute it will download the patches it will create a deployment package right only after deployment only after creating a package you will be able to distribute right till date we that's what we are seeing distribute it to dp then finally deploy to collection so these are the internal steps so once you right click a software update group and say deploy it to a collection so first they will be downloaded a deployment package is created and then that package is distributed to dp and finally it is deployed to a collection right guys so once this is finished what are we going to do on the client machine right on the client machine machine policy will run after that software updates deployment evaluation cycle should be done right software update deployment evaluation cycle so when this cycle runs it will understand okay there is a deployment onto this machine right and then it will open all these um, whatever it will understand what are the patches that are uh, part of this uh, software update group right and then based on the uh, requirement it will start downloading them from the distribution point and installs and whatever is the status success or failure is reported back to the MP and SUP guys is this process clear that's when the installation is completed downloads from DP installs and reports back guys any questions in this process before I do this practical and show it to you Hello. Also does the same. Hello. Sorry, I, I didn't get that question. Sorry. The WSUS server also does the same. It pushes the updates to the client machines, right? Yes. So, uh, may I know the difference? Uh, why do you we use this? Sure. Sure, sure okay any other questions okay before I answer that Sai uh, guys any other questions in this process till now what I have explained okay so let me explain uh, Sai's question Sai see what are the different ways of doing it so real quick one is Microsoft updates right so on our home PCs what will happen you directly go to your Microsoft updates uh, site and uh, uh, by default if you don't because in our uh, in our uh, home environment so you don't have a WSUS or SCCM or anything as such so what is happening so by default you have this automatic updates uh, enabled so your client machine is going to Microsoft updates uh, server and downloading the patches right and installing it so in this case download automatically from Microsoft update server so this happens for home PCs right now first of all can we use this for can we use the same thing even for enterprise instead of going for WSUS SCM and all that stuff why don't we use the same thing for enterprise users right we can also still enable it yeah why not you can still do that so then what is that you have to do from a group policy you'll uh, create a group policy saying that okay automatically update from uh, Microsoft update server so so that on all the machines it is the same behavior you can make sure that okay automatically um, 
download uh, and install and uh, from Microsoft Update Server. So so that even if somebody changes it to do not download or something like that, the group policy will set it back so that for everybody uh, their machines are compliant. Great. So using group policy, you can make sure that a standard setting is uh, the same standard setting. Okay. This one is set on all the machines. Great. Now, what what is that an enterprise user is missing by doing so? If you remember, in the initial patch management process, what we have discussed, the very important thing is you will not install the patches as and when Microsoft releases them on your production environment, right? Because each environment is different. You wanted to have some pilot machines. First of all, test them within your enterprise. Only then you want to move it to the production. So that kind of a delay or test period cannot be introduced here when you are downloading directly from Microsoft Update Server. So the cons, the consequences or the con side of this is you cannot have pilot versus prod environment wherein you can test and then only deploy. So there is no uh, testing involved here. Right. So let's go step by step. So this is the one con right now. And that is more very important. So just rule out this uh, enabling Microsoft updates in our environment, in our uh, enterprise environment. So it is still a viable solution for small businesses, right? Small and middle businesses for whom the, uh, they have hardly some 100 or 500 machines and they're not worried about having a pilot production, multiple cycles of testing and all that. They just wanted to go ahead and install when our Microsoft releases. Yes, you can still have, do it. Now, since we're talking about the concept of pilot versus production testing, so we think, okay, let's do this way. Why don't we have WSS in our environment? Okay, so what is the benefit that WSS is giving us? In WSUS, you can select the categories, right? Your own specific products. You can tell, okay, I have this operating system. I don't need Windows XP patches because all I have is Windows 7 and Windows 10, or I have only Windows 10. I don't need even Windows 7, Windows 8 patches. So you can select your product. Uh, you can also select your uh, other Microsoft products like Office or uh, you know Visio or whatever you have. So you can select the respective categories and download only them to your WSUS. Then what you can do, create a group policy and in that group policy you will tell, okay, download automatically but this time don't go to Microsoft Update Server, go to a internal WSUS. So you can create A group policy right so this time what will happen instead of going to the Microsoft update server your client machines are going to your WSUS server right so here what you can do is downloading these patches and putting onto the, uh, the WSUS server you can make sure that these patches are ready only after a month so you can have a delay introduced in the WSUS. That means you can say, okay, after 30 days, Microsoft releases, you have those patches in your WSUS. Now your client machines are contacting the WSUS server. So they are getting patches, though they are contacting them in real time, but all the patches that they are getting are only after 30 days. So already there is a delay and that way, at least your environment is not directly getting hit by the uh, any any uh, uh, patches that, which are released by Microsoft right so what you can do here is you can have two group policies you can have two group policies and target this group policy to pilot machines so as and when Microsoft released the pilot machines get this you can test on those pilot machines and there is production machines which are getting patches from the WSUS, right? So pilot machines are getting immediately, production machines are getting after 30 days. So meanwhile, you can test and if you find a particular patch is not uh, suitable uh, for in your environment, it is it might cause some issues. In the WSUS console, you'll delete that patch, you'll remove it so that when the client machine is contacting the WSUS server, it will not even find that, that patch because you have already deleted it from the WSUS. Right guys? So this way you are able to achieve that pilot versus production kind of environment. Proper testing can be done. You can select only the categories you require. So you are achieving great things here. Good. What is the con side? Can you do a target targeted push? 
so your client machines are getting policies from the uh, group policy uh, they, they they know that they have to contact wss from the group policy and after that so they are directly contacting the group policy uh, directly contacting the wss server and uh, then they are pulling pulling the patches but there is nothing like a targeted push from your wss server so say suppose you want to patch some 100 machines only 100 machines right so there is no uh, clear targeted push mechanism there so all you have to do is every time you have to create a new group policy and that group policy you have to uh, create a separate ou or separate group and for them you have you will have uh, you know uh, the, uh, you, you can have this download automatically setting that's the only setting that you can give right but there is no targeted push into uh, 50 machines 100 machines or 200 machines uh, that only these patches needs to be installed so there is no targeted push right and then um, even as I said, so say suppose you want only Windows 7 patches to be pushed to 10 machines, right? Not only targeting the uh, audience, uh, targeting the collection, but even which patches should be pushed to these machines. So even at the uh, patches site, you cannot target them, right? You cannot uh, categorize them and push only those patches to the uh, end user devices. Then coming to the compliance check. So say suppose if you have 100 patches pushed if you have pushed 100 patches uh, this month you don't know out of 100 patches how many machines really require this uh, 100 patches or how, how many machines require uh, the patches and how many of them have installed successfully how many of them failed so what is the kind of compliance okay what is the report uh, of the failure or success rate so you don't have such kind of reporting or the compliance thing right so now think about if you're going with SCCM's SUP which software bit point which is in turn in the back end it depends on WSS it requires WSS to be installed right now but you will not configure WSS you're just installing WSS but you're not configuring you're not going to WSS console you're not supposed to do anything in the WSS console just install it as a prerequisite now the moment you install software update point within software update point you have options to select the categories office visio and all that and so since we are just targeting on the cons and taking uh, taking it further so what happens here you have collections right you have software update groups so you can group both the patches as well as you can group the computers and target specific deployments so you can deploy software update groups to respective collections so this way you have a targeted push here great what next even the client machines they're downloading from their local DP so if you are uh, spread across the globe they're not going to a single WSUS server to download the patches they are just like how they get their uh, Adobe Reader or AutoCAD application from within their uh, LAN network they will have a distribution point like the same ways even the patches they're going to their uh, local uh, distribution point and they're downloading it from there so bandwidth bandwidth savings right so and not only bandwidth time so they're downloading from the local uh, DP so that will be much quicker right and compliance check so here even if one single update one single patch or update is required by some one machine out of 100k client machines that you have right even that granular level report is possible report and compliance wherein it will clearly tell you okay this one update out of some thousand updates that you have within your environment is required for one machine out of your hundred and thousand machines and on that one machine it is installed so your machine your patches uh, your your machine is compliant right or else if that is failed then it is not compliant and when I say reporting it will also give you why it failed so that kind of granular report is possible and then you can take appropriate action against it right and when I say deployments we all know that deployments always comes with schedule 
So you can schedule your deployments and say that, okay, it has to run only on so-and-so time, right? Whereas, whereas that is not possible from WSS. Since there is no targeted push, there's no specified time. You're getting my point? So I, did I answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let me just extend it by one more uh, concept of WSS. Uh, guys, have you heard about maintenance windows? Any one of you? Yes. Okay. So, what is a maintenance window, Amar? So, it's basically when uh, the server is um, either we are shutting it down or restarting it, uh, we have to plan uh, accordingly as uh, number of clients is reporting uh, or uh, any major feature is being captured for this uh, a maintenance window is uh, is is scheduled uh, based on the change request and uh, at that particular period of time and there will be a downtime of uh, the servers yes yes you have nailed it you have nailed it so that's it so Maintenance window is basically as uh, Amar uh, uh, briefed it. So whenever you know that uh, you have to do some kind of um, uh, critical uh, change on a server, typically maintenance windows are for servers. We don't take it for client machines. So for servers, when you are um, sure that you are doing some critical change onto it and you're expecting a downtime of, of the server or a restart of the server or because of the change, something else might happen right so typically what you do is make sure that to make sure or to ensure um, there is zero business impact you will raise a change request right so uh, every every week or maybe uh, bi-weekly so you'll have a change request uh, uh, board and then you have a meeting so during that meeting or uh, what you'll do you'll just have this uh, change request uh, presented telling that okay so this uh, next uh, the coming Saturday or the third Saturday of the month we are going to uh, uh, make some changes on particular servers these 10 servers so and during these non peak hours so uh, maybe early morning uh, Saturday 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. so this is the timing when we wanted to make changes to the server right so hence uh, we require a maintenance window so that is a communication maintenance window is nothing but you are just sending a communication to the all the other teams like the networking team the systems uh, systems management team right or the server monitoring server health monitoring team so to uh, all the different teams you are just sending a notification that expect this okay this is going to happen expect this if something uh, happens so don't, don't uh, if if you see an alert in your scom or if you see something else in your uh, respective tools uh, don't get uh, don't panic so this is something expected and we are doing some change on it right this is a maintenance window now we can also use the same maintenance window even for our patch management right so when if you have some 500 servers windows servers in your environment and you have to uh, update patches every month this is a monthly activity you have to do it so the first thing what you do is every month you'll send uh, this is a default maintenance window like it is not something uh, which you're doing only uh, once in a time right so it is almost we know it's a process that every month you have to uh, patch your servers so you'll send a communication change management saying that okay on every third Saturday uh, from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. We are going to uh, update, we are going to uh, install updates on this server and during this uh, time, uh, please expect uh, multiple restarts of the server. So this is a maintenance window what we are doing. So these maintenance windows are not possible when you are doing from WSUS, right? So when you are doing from WSUS, uh, you can set a maintenance window as a change management uh, theory you can tell them that I'm going to do it this you know, during this time and what you have to do it if you just have WSUS you're going to manually log into that server and then run the uh, you know uh, the, install the patches which are already downloaded from WSUS install those patches manually that means you have to trigger it at least check for updates you have to go to control panel and say check for updates or install the updates from the control panel wherein if it is already downloaded it will start installing if not downloaded it will check for updates and it will go to the WSUS server 
instead of going to Microsoft Update, at least since you have the WSS in your environment, it will go to WSS server, download and install. On that, if you start at one o'clock by uh, four o'clock, you will make sure that all the patches are installed and you are restarting the machine multiple times and making sure that by after four o'clock the machine is up and running, the server is up and running, right? This is a though you have WSS, though you have taken maintenance window, it is still a heavily touched option, right? Now with SCM, what you can do? With SCM, you can create a server collection. Right? You can create a server collection. So say suppose you have some find it machines. Add those find it servers here. Right? Then what you will do? On the collection property, you have something called maintenance window. You will set the maintenance window. You will on the collection property you will set okay Saturday 01. Zero 04 so a uh, collection uh, on the collection the property has been set which is for maintenance window now while you are creating the deployment see earlier we have discussed here you will create a deployment right where is that deploy it to a collection so once your software update group is done finally you are deploying it to the collection right client machine uh, machine policy will run software update cycle will run downloads from DP installs and reports back now what will happen that's downloading from DP will happen before one o'clock. That means if you have deployed it on second Tuesday, Microsoft released patches. Okay, on say suppose on second Thursday, that's when you created a deployment. Right from second Thursday till third Saturday. That's the uh, maintenance window which we have set. Right, but starting from third Saturday, the maintenance window starts. It gets triggered. Between this time, it will download the patches on the server and keep ready. So it is not installing it. It's not triggering it. It's just kept ready there on those uh, on that uh, server, right? Only when maintenance windows triggers, when MW triggers, that is when it when it is third Saturday early morning one a.m. Yep, that's when installation st starts automatically. You are not sitting there and monitoring it, right? So automatically at one o'clock the installation will start. Um, uh, it, it will start installing the updates and if required it will do automatically it will do multiple restarts and after every restart again the scan cycle will run the deployment evolution cycle will run it will find out okay still I have some more patches to install so I say suppose there are some 20 patches after say suppose first patch it restarts again after uh, restarting again it will find okay I still have 19 patches it will install it will restart so automatically it resumes until the uh, all the 20 patches are completed right and finally, after uh, the final restart, uh, the machine is up and running. Now, say suppose this installation process goes beyond four o'clock, right? You always have the setting. Uh, you have always have an option to configure in such a way that, okay, since the process has already started and patches are getting installed, continue even if the uh, maintenance window is surpassed. That means even after four o'clock, since you have already started it, and now it is, uh, you have installed like out of 20, 18 patches are installed, still two more are pending, and it's already four o'clock. Go ahead and continue and install those two. It doesn't harm. By five or 4.30, everything should be up and running. So that's one way of configuring. Other way is, at four o'clock, doesn't matter. You have two patches, three patches, or 20 patches. Close it abruptly. That means just finish the final process, whatever is the final patch which is already getting installed. Finish it off and after that don't uh, proceed with any new patch. Right? Stop it there itself and then what you'll do is, anyways you'll get a compliance report. Uh, you can go and check the reports, how many patches are installed, how many have failed or how many uh, were not able to install because the maintenance window has surpassed. Right? And based on that, you can take a specific uh, change request raise a separate change request saying that okay in the last uh, last month or the last week when we triggered the patch installation some of the patches were not installed because of the maintenance window so we need more time we need extra time right you can ask for that and on next saturday you can plan for uh, those uh, installations but typically that will not happen because three hours of time is too much for if you are doing it monthly 
because month if you're doing it once in six months or something like that you might have too many patches but if monthly you are updating your machine hardly you'll get some 10 15 patches uh, and three hours is more than enough to install it unless until your frequency cycle is uh, you know uh, is very less the frequency is very less and you're doing it once in six months or once in a quarter then probably this maintenance window time is not sufficient guys is this clear to all of you or you have any questions okay clear. okay thank you thanks Omar. so so what is that we are expecting now we wanted to start from here the client machine so this is the this is the step that we wanted to see now right so since we have started uh, the client machine and we were discussing about all this theory part I guess by now the scan cycle might have already done let me see if now it shows any required patches earlier it was not showing any required patches right let, let us check that I don't know if the scan cycle has run or not but let's give it a try no right or let me put a criteria required required is less than or equal to no is greater than or equal to at least one no so currently to my understanding the scan cycle has not run so let's go to the client machine manager actions scan cycle okay let me also open the log file and see what happens when we run scan cycle C windows let's CCM C windows CCM logs so there must be the scan cycle scan agent So to me it looks like it has not run okay so let me trigger it now so before running scan cycle let me also do a machine policy retrieval and then run scan updates software update scan cycle So it says that uh, a new ID scan job ID is created and will process the scan request once the locations are available. It got the location WSS location update received for location request grid. It says source are not current. Let's wait for a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, you'll have WA handler. Okay, this one says it has successfully completed the scan. Okay, so scan job has done and scan completion received. So ideally it has checked it has downloaded the metadata XML file it has checked what are the patches required and if we go to the console ideally we are expecting that at least some of the these patches it has to say that those are required for it let's see if that's the case or not okay 
software updates scan job is completed let's let's give it a couple of minutes time here to get updated Well, just to speed up, let me run the summarization. Now do this. Okay, this is the W Sync Manager. This is for now so on this machine scan has been completed scan completion received after that do I have anything else on this machine talking about I put the same criteria again and see required uh, is greater than or equal to just one machine so let's give it some time guys so I don't think there is any other piece missing here unless and until I made a blunder somewhere let's go to administration and check the client settings uh, this is the default client setting for software updates so enable software updates on clients is there and then by default schedule is once in seven days but we have triggered it to run immediately and schedule deployment re-evaluation okay that's also once in seven days okay this so everything is clean here unless until you know if this was selected as no that's a different story but if that is enabled I, I don't suspect any issue here and if I go back to the don't tell me that not even one, even at least one is not required that shouldn't be the case and what are the patches that we have here we have for for Windows 7 as well as 2010 so let me see on the client machine do I have any patches installed already this was What is the programs and features? We installed updates. Nope. I don't see any Microsoft patches installed. So let me quickly run the so update, update scan cycle once again. So it has rerun. And it is successfully completed. So ideally it should get updated here. OK, 
okay nevertheless so while uh, it is updating and while we get this required information even say suppose if it is taking 10 minutes or 15 minutes instead of waiting for this let's create the software update group anyways we are going to see that required uh, maybe have, while we are creating software update group we'll see that so see basically what uh, uh, the steps that I've mentioned here is we have run the scan circuit right it has it is I can see that the scan has been completed successfully but it is taking some time to get updated in the console uh, to give the get this information but still uh, what we can do is we can still create a software update group and start deploying it to a collection so while creating software update group what we'll do since we don't know what are required patches and what are not required we can still create a software update group for uh, you know uh, the uh, randomly you can pick any patches but in real time environment what we will do is every month since this is a monthly activity right every month the moment software update, new patches are released so you will sort them based on the date released or the date revised and those patches you will uh, bundle them together as a software update group so let's do it how you do it in the real time so in the real time so you can have add criteria date released or maybe with date released or revised um, maybe so as I told you on second Tuesday uh, those are released or revised and then you wanted to push them to the pilot uh, pilot machines right uh, so you can you're doing it on a second Thursday that means a couple of days back whatever is released on in the last two days you can select that way but in in our case uh, when is the past Tuesday it was in the month of um, May right so it's almost one month back so let me select last one month search so it has given oh, oh my goodness almost like 637 patches are there so let let me make it if I make it last six days ideally there should be none there should be zero right last one week okay because maybe because I've selected date released and revised let me change it to date released at the last one month okay my bad I'm selecting is on or before one month right it's not on or after one month so before one month obviously all the patches would be before one month only it's my bad so add criteria go back to date released or revised and it's of on or after last one month so anything which is released in the last one month search you have only 20 items there right so these are the recent patches so now since you have the recent patches these 20 patches so this is this is how you do it right uh, if you're doing it every month so you're going to select for uh, last two days in, in your production environment you will go for last two days because on Tuesday it was released and you are creating this pack, patch on Thursday you are creating the software update group on Thursday and you are targeting it for pilot machines right guys so that's the scenario so I'll select here last two days on or after and you get all these 20 patches now I'll select all of them I say control A right you right click create software update group right and I'll call them as these are on or after May right so these are May patches so I'll call them as Windows uh, it's not only Windows 7 you have even 2010 everything so I can call them as May 2017 patches okay, this is software update group May 2017 patches SUG created for pilot machines you're not going to push the uh, recent patches to the production so that's the reason I give the description as such now I have this software update group made to those certain patches but did I deploy anywhere no did I download no so that's the reason downloaded is no deployed is no percentage complete is no right now 
let me deploy it that's the process right if you see that is a process deployed to collection it should automatically download deploy package distribute to DP and all this should happen as part of it so, so deploy okay so it is asking to which collection you want to deploy what else? Um, I don't remember where exactly I have this Metis 01 machine. So let me put all systems. It is not going to harm anyways. So ideally you will select here your pilot collection. Right guys? And then say next. Type of deployment is required. Okay. And do you want to get all the messages or only the success and error messages, right? So default one is success and error messages. And this is the same scheduling how we do it even for our um, packages distribution when you're de deploying a package or application. So one is the available time and the installation. So here the additional thing is installation deadline and available time. The small difference here is, as I told you, you can download uh, by uh, say, say in case of servers, I just gave you an example, right? On third Thursday, you are uh, pushing it. And on second uh, Saturday, you wanted to uh, deploy them. So then, thereby you have some time there, right? So you wanted to download it, uh, first of all, and keep them ready, and later you wanted to install, something like that. So even in this case, what you can do is download as soon as possible. So immediately it will start downloading. However, the installation deadline is like you have still time till uh, whatever is the time, like you can have uh, after one month, 15 days, 20 days kind of. So in my case, I'll say installation deadline is also as soon as possible, download also as soon as possible. All right. So this is the user experience. So uh, user notification. Do you want to have uh, the notification to the user that uh, some patches are getting downloaded onto your machine and your machine, uh, you know, how the patches have been successfully completed or you don't want to give any message to him. Just hide in software center and all notifications. You don't want to give any information, right? And only show or else just hide the entire process, but only show the uh, notifications for computer restarts. When the computer will restart, you can give him a notification saying that, okay, next uh, 90 minutes your machine is going to restart. Next 15 minutes your machine is going to restart kind of. Right, so I'll say display all notifications. Right, then you have uh, deadline behavior. When the installation deadline is reached, allow the following actor to perform outside the maintenance window. You remember I was telling you, say suppose if something spills out of this four o'clock, if still some patches are there and it is spilling out of four o'clock, I told you you can you have the option to select. Where is that option? This is where it is. So here it is saying when the installation deadline is reached, right? allow the following act to perform outside the maintenance. So even if the out maintenance window is passed, but since the installation deadline is uh, to be installed today itself, but the maintenance window is passed, so what, what are you going to do? So still go ahead and install software updates and still if they are required, go ahead and uh, restart uh, server. If you want to do that explicitly, you'll give here. Otherwise by default, at maintenance window 4 o'clock, it will halt. It will not do it up beyond that, right? So this is an explicit setting because by default it is maintenance window means maintenance window. After maintenance window, nothing will happen there. Anything should happen only be between the maintenance window or before uh, during the time. Right? So this is for that. Next, this is for alerts. So what you can do is based on the compliance. So you're pushing it to some 500 machines, right? You can set that out of 500 machines, okay, to, to make it much easier. Uh, say suppose if you're pushing it to 100 machines, right? You can set a compliance like out of 100 machines, uh, if 95%, 95%, that is 95 machines or less, less than 95 machines have got this uh, application, uh, this patch installed, then give me an alert, right? So that way you don't need to uh, go into the reports and check it. It is a proactive alert what you can get. So you can select this. So client compliance in the below percentage. If it is less than 95 percentage, right? Uh, and you're giving it a time of one week. So after you have uh, pushed the patches, you're giving it one week of time to get, install those patches. Even after one week, if uh, only uh, 92 machines are uh, have got the patches out of 100, that means you're below the compliance. So it will automatically throw, in, throw you an alert saying that um, only 92 machines have got, other eight machines didn't get it. Accordingly, you can take an action. So uh, Manohar, uh, just a question on that. Uh, mm -hmm. So where does the alert go? Does it go to a specific email ID or how does the alert trigger? 
Now, you will see those, those alerts in the configuration manager itself. So you have monitoring node. So I'll, I'll show you. So once we close this, okay. one, so it's in the uh, configuration manager that you get these alerts, right? But just in case if you have SCOM as well, that is operation uh, operations manager as well, then you'll get uh, SCOM alerts. That's a different thing. Uh, generating uh, op cell, uh, op operation manager alerts are different, but by default, we are uh, config configuration manager alerts that can be seen from the console. Right, I'll, I'll show it to you once this is completed. Say so next. So th this is the default thing here. We have already seen it multiple times. So if it is not available on your DP, should I download it or not? If it is on a slow network, right? The same same behavior. It's the same thing. Now you are creating a deployment package. You see, you just targeted as a collection. So as part of it, now you are here. You're creating the deployment package now, right? So let's do that. Uh, I want to give it a name, the same, the same name, right? It is uh, May 17 uh, updates. And the package source location, let's have it under uh, May CCM source. May 17. Right. So now it is asking where to distribute, right? So even distribution is also happening simultaneously. Distribute to DP. So it will tell, okay, distribute to the May CMDP. Okay. So should I download from internet? or do you already have it on your network? So sometimes what will happen? If you already have one more WSS server or you have a software update point and you have already downloaded to one location, right? You don't want to go back to the internet and download again. So that's the option here. So you say, okay, download software updates from internet. Language is English. Right. So these are the patches that are selected as part of software update group. So I'm going to create a deployment. So this is the deployment name and it is going to push to be this collection, all systems collection, right? And I've created a deployment package called May 17 updates and all of them will be downloaded from internet and distributed to the DP, May CMDP, right? The content to this DP, we're distributing it. So next. So now it, it connects to internet and it starts downloading. So if you see the difference between this updates folder and May 17 thing. So this updates are 657 updates, patches, right? But it is just 56.8 KB because it is just metadata file. Now this May 17, wherein you are going to download only 20 patches, right? So if you see already some patches are downloaded. If you see their size is already like 11 MB, right? So it's it's downloading the patches. You can see them here. So some of them are uh, cumulative updates, you have quality updates, right? So based on that, what will happen uh, for a certain update, though the update is single, but inside it, it might have multiple uh, patches together, right? It's a cumulative update. So that's the reason you see more folders here, more than 20. So while we are waiting for this, uh, can we do something here? No, we can't. We can't go back to the console, right? So guys, any questions till now?
I guess in another five minutes this process should complete. I should have selected some five six patches only instead of twenty. Let me stop recording for a couple of minutes. So Amar and Sai, so are you aware of uh, hydration kits? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. So basically, uh, there is something called hydration kit uh, from Microsoft, and there are two versions of hydration kit. One is the designer version, and one is the consumer side. So, so typically. Uh, Microsoft uh, employees or uh, some of the uh, Microsoft resources they can actually even have the designer version of it and they can make changes to it but at least uh, for the public general audience uh, we can uh, download from the internet hydration kit and what exactly it does is uh, it will automatically create the entire lab for you right so it will be somewhere around uh, 20 gigs if you download it from internet uh, and you start running it so it show it gives you multiple options like uh, do you want to install it for operating system deployments or is the whole purpose is for you know enterprise mobility suite or is it for uh, is your uh, kind of activities so based on that uh, whatever you select if you want to do a mobile management mobile device management right so based on that whatever you select uh, it will automatically create the component so when I say components it will also create the domain controller uh, it will create um, the SCCM server say suppose in your case if you are using even MDT like operating system deployment it will even create MDT server right uh, in case of EMS and other activities it will have an Intune server it will have uh, Intune server in the sense the same thing it's the same server integrated with Intune and then uh, it will also have uh, Azure Active Directory subscription right so all that will be automatically uh, created it will give you a provision uh, to directly start working on it so my suggestion is since uh, you guys uh, have very little time and to gain confidence, I would say, why why don't you go ahead and download that hydration kit, some 20 gigs, and select that XML, OSD XML, and trigger it. So you should be you should have all the components that are ready for you. Sure, and uh, this can be downloaded from the Microsoft uh, site, is it? Yeah. So I'm actually trying to bing it so that I can send the link here itself in the chat. Just give me a couple of minutes. I'll try to send you the latest hydration kit. So hydration kits are for everything. The hydration kits are very popular. So it's not only for SCCM and all. So you have hydration kits for almost everything that Microsoft has released. So that should be really helpful to you guys if you are not aware of it. See, I'm just pulling this onto the main screen so that you all can see. See, so this one, what he claims is this hydration kit contains a domain controller, configuration manager, right? DPM, MDT, and then operations manager, orchestrator, and you have some four machines for you to play around, right? Then you have service manager and VMM. So this is one hydration kit for system center. So like this, what I'm saying, you'll have one hydration kit only for our, uh, um, only for SCCM. So you'll not have other components, right? This is for the entire system center. And uh, I guess this is the old one. Yeah, this is the old one. Let me try to find a new one for you and send it across. Okay, so this is completed. Now it says, you see, deployed is, downloaded is, right? Number of collections it is deployed to is one. Let me see if, if you are lucky enough with that required selection. I guess I'm not. Uh, 
never mind so let's proceed so now where are we yep on this client machine so let me trigger the machine policy so it should identify that there's a deployment target to it let's see what happens so the first thing is the policy agent is run Let me keep the scan agent open. It's a scan request completed. It just triggered. It found these are the updates, right? We had some 20 updates, right? So it checked if these 20 updates, right? It checked if these 20 updates are required for this machine. And let me do a refresh here. I guess, yeah, these are those 20 things. Skipping scan and using cache test, reporting scan request comp complete to clients, fine. Let me run deployment evolution cycle. So it'll evaluate based on the deployment if anything is required to be run now. I was expecting that none of these patches are required for this machine because this is just a Windows 7 and I don't think patches which are released in May 2017 would be directly required for this. My bad luck. Please just give me a minute.
so guys it's taking more than the typical time actually by now we should get whether it is required or not required for some reason it is taking more than the required time and I don't see any um, see we, we don't see any errors in the scan as well so the scan has completed successfully and uh, that's what even the report says even on the log file uh, I see the scan has been successfully completed uh, I'm not sure why it is taking too long unless and until uh, I'm not missing anything here so let's proceed with the next steps so that at least um, you know we'll give, give it some more time if still if it doesn't come anyways I have I'll have the recording on and whatever is the status uh, that will be recorded so whether it is failing or uh, failing to scan or update right that information will have let me do one more thing okay let's do one thing so I'll go to the um, the software update point okay and in the classifications and products let me see if I can give something else for August 2010 then I have for I just wanted to see if there is any other Windows 7 version no for Windows 8 and 10 we have but for Windows 7 that's the only thing let me also include updates in that case maybe okay what's the service pack of this machine I guess this is just Windows 7 right there's no service pack on this machine let me do one thing in that case definitely this machine requires a service pack right if I'm not wrong so let me select is that let me select a service pack as well say apply let's say at least it should show me that service pack is required for it right so okay and since we have selected uh, we made a change onto the software update point we have asked it to even synchronize software uh, service pack what I'm supposed to do is I am supposed to go back to software library all software updates and uh, synchronize the software updates right and when I synchronize it Let me check the log file. Wait a minute, is this already open? Yes, yeah, sync manager is already open. So it says full sync required due to changes in category subscription, right? We have made a category change. We have even selected service spec. So it says a full sync is required. This time I'm hoping that I service pack would be downloaded. Yes, synchronizing the started synchronizing with WSUS. Meanwhile, let me see, do I have any other Windows 7 machines since we have built some Windows 7 machines, right? Uh, we have target Windows 7 as well. Let me start that machine just in case, um, say suppose if this particular machine is, um, machine itself is having issues. I don't want to waste time uh, because of a client machine has some issues. So essentially, let me start target machine and run scan cycle even there.
So, Amaro Sai, uh, meanwhile, any other questions do you guys have? I see um, Anil and Manju dropped, uh, dropped off because of uh, power issues. They lost power. No, Manar, nothing at this point. Sai, any other questions uh, you have um, uh, based on your lab? Nothing related to patch management, though. No, that's what I'm saying. Not related to patch management, but if you have any other questions. Yeah, but uh, yesterday I've seen one error actually. Uh, I, I resolved it, but I just wanted to share. Uh, um, I, before I have not updated that uh, actually, uh, when, we, uh, when we are in the initial classes, um, you have, uh, we need to update uh, service packs, right? Uh, you have given you as a two folders to update update the CCM once the installation is complete. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm listening. So, what's the update you're saying, uh, Sai? The update uh, uh, actually you have given two folders. I mean, uh, two service packs. We need to update it. Uh, right uh, once the SCM was installed. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, I was updating it. Actually, I, I uh, created the site uh, application and everything. Mm -hmm. So when I was trying to create the application uh, to deploy, I could not see the um, MSI pop up. I mean, when I click the drop down button, I could not see MSI. Okay, okay, okay. So I thought it's for the update uh, which I have not done. Mm -hmm. No, actually, the thing is, I wanted to see the difference what the option you get and what option I am missing here. So there I could see uh, issues with the SQL database and also with the site hierarchy site uh, configuration. Okay. So as QL issue was, uh, I need to update the service pack and then it got resolved. Hierarchy, the site configuration, I'm not still understanding. I need to work on it. Now, what is the hierarchy issue that you're getting? Right, it says the hierarchy site configuration um, has an uh, update. Sorry, version is not correct. Version does not sub, uh, uh, supports update. Um, so you mean to say that, if I understand correctly, when you are trying to install update, the you are getting a site hierarchy error. Is this what when you are getting when you are trying to install the update? Yes, yes. In the pre-requisition check, it says. Uh, site version which is installed is not uh, is not able to update something like that version it's something related to the version site version okay and do you have uh, multiple primaries or is it a standalone primary it's a standalone primary i guess then um, the sequence in which you are uh, installing the update maybe after uh, 2012 r2 is installed so I've, I've explained a particular sequence, right? So first you have to install the SP1 and then the the other one. Um, so maybe you missed that sequence by any chance? Ha I mean to say that I've, I've told you, okay, first you have to install this and then this, there's a, there's a sequence. Maybe you're trying to install the, the final one before and that's the reason it is showing that there's a difference in the, um, you know. Uh, but when I install the first one, Says the same. The update version has not triggered. I mean, uh, it's not supported. Actually. Can you please send me the screenshot? Sorry. Uh, sure, no, no, actually, not. Not, not now. Not now. I'm fine with that. I meant to say that if you can drop me a mail with that screenshot. Sure. Man. Later on. Okay. So meanwhile, on this machine, what we are doing here is um, it is still it's almost at 89 percent. Is another 42 seconds that what it says. 
because there's a full synchronization which is running so that's the reason it is taking a little bit of time and okay so 100% this is completed however again uh, you'll see individual uh, updates out of these uh, what and all it has downloaded right so it, it will you will see individual updates and it will be either skipping them based on their supersedence otherwise it will download so let's see currently how many do we have here we have the 657 so once it skips and adds you'll find the rest of the badges here says it is sleeping for 120 seconds that's two minutes and so meanwhile uh, what we are doing on the other machine is Windows uh, the target machine I just started this machine and I want to run the scan cycle on this one Scan cycle has not yet reached this machine. Even if I run this, it should automatically scan. Download the scan cycle part and start it. Right, so after 120 seconds, it has started processing this Windows 7 with Office 2010, and now it also says the update classification has service packs here. Right, so I'm, all I want now is it to download the service pack. Let it skip everything else. So, um, well, this is happening. So, the, guys, uh, the remaining part, what we have is, uh, I, I thought that uh, I could complete uh, batch management today, but looks like that's not the case because I couldn't sh show you that required part. Maybe it might take uh, some more time because service pack, again, um, it's huge, so downloading and pushing it to the client machine it might take some more time but anyways I'll start I'll uh, keep everything recording here and uh, if required uh, tomorrow also we'll continue on the patch management part and after that uh, the remaining stuff is uh, software metering is what I want to cover uh, compliance management which is DCM uh, piece I want to cover and I want to show you the um, custom reports uh, if there is, uh, did, did we look into SSRS how to create custom report? Uh, did we look into that earlier? Amar and uh, Sai, just I don't remember. Uh, no, I think um, we haven't Not created custom reports. We haven't created any custom reports. No. Okay. But some somehow I remember uh, we getting into the SSRS screen, a uh, report builder screen, something like that. Sai, you're sure that uh, I haven't gone through creating of any reports, custom reports earlier? We have created custom reports. Custom reports we have created, I guess, uh, remember we are showing some custom reports. Uh... Yes, yes, yes. Because I remember showing into an SSRS um, uh, thing and report builder and creating a custom report based on maybe for ad remove programs or uh, you know some inventory management thing, stuff I think I've created a report right so uh, never mind so th that thing uh, we can discuss so let me let me see 
so these are the things that come in my mind which are left over is uh, pm uh, the conclusion part is there okay patch management and then we have um, software metering this shouldn't take much time uh, we have uh, compliance management this this is also a pretty simple topic and finally i have this quick reference session uh, wherein I'll, I'll share that xlsx and then we'll have uh, what is what is left over um, some admin tasks right logs and all will be discussed there mm, yeah Apart from this, is is there anything that, uh, yeah, if we just talk about custom reports, I've already touched upon it, but still, if you want, I can have that include. Anything else, guys? Sai and Amar? Yeah, that's one thing which is, that's one thing which is download, uh, if possible, the 1702 media. And upgrade uh, SCM 2000 currently we are in 2002 right I can just upgrade it to 1702 and show you how to how to upgrade to the latest version I think uh, 1705 is also released right? Recently. Uh, is it released in the during our sessions during our class I think I, I just saw some updates uh, wherein it shows uh, SCCM 1705 is released. Because the latest thing that I remember is 1702, which release or 1703. Maybe you're talking about a technical preview, which is not at released outside. Okay, probably I just uh, saw the, something flashing. I think I think that's the technical review you're talking about here. Yeah. The technical preview thing, uh, uh, it's not not available for the um, what we say it is GA, general availability is not there. Uh, but where is the other version? So a, anything else, guys? Uh, as part of um, these trainings, do you think anything else should have been covered or? You want me to cover in the last uh, four or five sessions? See. This is what we went through, right? In the very demo session. If you see on March 23rd, what we have is 1702, which is released in March. So if you're saying 1705, it should be released in the month of June. That is now. So currently it is not yet released, uh, not there for general availability. So what I'm saying is maybe by end of June, you can expect uh, 1705. Yeah, I think it's some technical review at this point. Yeah, yeah, it must be technical review. But so what, I'll, what I can do, do is I can download the 1702 baseline media and upgrade so earlier it used to be this way so let me go one step back so earlier it used to be like you have to first have uh, your infrastructure upgraded to SCM 1511 okay and once you have SCM 1511 then uh, if in console uh, there is something called service connection point okay uh, just like your management point distribution point so there's a uh, new role so once you have that new role so what you can do is um, uh, you can it, it will show you what are the uh, new uh, SCCM updates available so there you can find uh, 1602 1606 and all the latest versions and you can update from within the console no need to download it as a separate baseline media and up upgrade you can download within and but but then you cannot directly upgrade to 1602 from 2012 to SP1 or 1606 from directly so you have to pass through 1511 and then 
upgrade to the latest version that used to be the case but now with 1702 as far as i remember they have released a baseline media which means that uh, directly from 2012 r2 you have this baseline media 1702 installed and directly upgrade uh, you uh, sc infrastructure 1702 without going through this entire cycle of upgrading from 1511 to 1602 and then coming to 1702 clear so that anyways we'll do it i'll show i'll download this and install it so apart from that anything else uh, sai or you think we need to cover only this backup of scm will be covered on upgradation topics no actually it's not covered but yes yeah, if you want yeah sure why not actually backup is not covered there but okay backup and restore or repair in case if there are any issues okay then anything else comes to your mind is that all See, I see that um, it says service packs. Now it is started. Uh, since I selected service pack, it started synchronizing all the service packs for Microsoft Office, Access. I guess Windows 7 must be somewhere above. Yeah, Windows 7 service pack one. Right, it has synchronized. So now we have service packs as well. let me create a software update group just for this respect one create software update group win 7 sp1 create software update group win 7 sp1 deploy it to even if you deploy to all systems as i told you it will only target to the required collection right required computers wherever it is required all systems in reality you will select windows and machines though required as soon as possible as soon as possible there are no maintenance windows Create a new deployment package. So I call it as Win7 SP1. May CCM source. Um, distribution point download from internet in english this may take some time so based on size spec size um manohar i'll have to drop off i've got some uh, work to do Sure, sure. Don't mind. No, no, no. I will not. So, as I told you, uh, let's. Um, I'll, I'll keep the recording on. 
and once the service pack is downloaded and installed uh, you will have this uh, complete patch management thing as part of the recording go ahead go ahead oh, thanks take care buddy bye and uh, Sai, you also feel free to drop off um, because anyways it is going to take time to download the service pack unless and until you have any questions Yeah, it is still. You want me to stop? So, guys, uh, I see this. This is installed successfully. I mean to say, it has downloaded successfully. Where are we? Downloaded and deployed to the client machine. Let me see on the client machine, right? Uh, this is at 8.12 so just now the scan has completed on this machine But I should run the machine policy first to check the deployments. Actually, what I'm expecting on this machine is we have pushed service spec one, we have deployed it, right? So I'm expecting that the scan should run, identify that yes, service spec one is required for me, and then it should start downloading and deploying service spec one. That is the expectation out of this particular exercise let's see what will happen So it is scanning still, the scan job is in progress. Okay. Wait a minute, is it distributed? Okay. Distribution is completed. And one more thing, uh, the deployments that I've created, right? Um, software update group. I want to check the deployment properties as well. Hey, wait a minute. I see this is 50% compliant. That means some of the patches are installed. And those are not installed on this machine. Does it mean the target machine with quality patches install in here? Control panel, programs and features. We installed updates. The main patches are there. The emission will install any patches right there. Okay, let me check.
uh, finally we have all these required things now so it took almost like one hour guys okay so we have this required thing and I can also run summarization once Very series pack one. Now this is .NET related stuff. Let me check service pack. Service pack for Windows Seven. Okay, still there is no information for this machine. So type of deployment is required. Scheduling, it's on uh, 6 by 2017, the local time of the computer, 7.53 a.m. So let me check if my client machines are also in the same time zone as they are. I think I found root cause so let me test it out and then I'll tell you
I was suspecting that the issue is because of um, Windows on activation. So let me see how is that going to make a difference here.
Okay, so this machine after activating, um, I can see that this machine is now activated and uh, when I run the policy on this machine, so Windows Service Pack 1, it identified is required and it started downloading now. And if you go to go back to your CCM server, software library, only thing is it just took more time. Go to your Win7. One packages. So let me add the criteria required is greater than or equal to one. So how many patches are there with that? There are at least sixteen. Right, so we can, since we know that these are come, they're required for sure, and uh, actually we haven't uh, deployed them anywhere. As you can see, they are not deployed, neither downloaded. So what we can do is we can uh, select them and create a software upload group and uh, deploy them to specific machine. So let's do this in uh, tomorrow's session. But anyways, the issue, um, I, I don't see any, um, uh, you know, uh, any issue in the configuration part or anything as such the only thing I found was maybe it is because of the client agent is not activated so okay, the client machine is not activated so I have activated the client machine and after that uh, I've ran the same scan cycle and same evolution cycle I can see that uh, it shows some of the patches are required right and just to speed up the process I have even made change in on the um, on the client settings and made it now uh, like refresh every five minutes Right, the scan cycle should run every five minutes and the evolution cycle should run every 10 minutes. So that's what I did there. And as you can see on the client machine right now, it is downloading Windows 7 Service Pack 1 and it's installing. So once this is installed, now since this machine is Windows 7 Service Pack 1, now there will be there will be so many patches um, which will turn into required state because before installing uh, Windows 7 Service Pack 1, there could be certain patches uh, by now might, might have expired and superseded right but now after once the machine is win7 sp1 um, when you do the scan cycle so most of the patches which are re released recently for windows 7 all of them it should show as required so let's see that uh, for now i'm stopping the recording here itself because as we can see that uh, patches uh, this particular windows and sp1 uh, is found to be required and it has downloaded and installing on this machine so I'll stop it here and let's continue in tomorrow's session right guys thank you